On today's program, we're at Sydney's Oran Park Raceway for the 1997 Ideal Internet Australian Super Truck Racing Grand Prix Championship Grand Final. Also on the program, we have the O'Brien Aluminium Sports Sedans, the HQ Holdens and Appendix J Cars. Front row of the grid, Des Wall and Terry Scheel. Second row, Ivan Mikak and Bob Jolly. Third row, Glenn Taylor and Peter O'Brien. Green light underway with racing and Des Wall gets up the inside of Terry Shield, but there's plenty of action behind them there. Look, look at that going around backwards was Ivan Mikak in the RX-7 and off the side of the circuit Bill Martin in another Mazda as well. Also Russell Stenhouse in the Toronto Rain on X mixed up in that melee down at the first corner. What a mess. Uh, those cars tangled up there and also uh, another Commodore in there uh, could be Glenn Taylor. Let's have a look at the replay. We can see Bob Jolly was up the inside there. He had to go a little bit wide and was very lucky to get away with a Glenn Taylor on the extreme inside, avoiding the action. Number 54 there taking evasive action was Craig Wooldridge in the Ford Capri. And you can see the wheel spinning going on there from the Mazda RX-7 of Bill Martin trying to get out of the road. Another one that looked like he was involved in that was the car number 44. Yeah, Bruce Deboo in the Mazda RX-7. Well, we have a restart now. Let's see if we can do it all over again. Not too many holes on the grid, so everybody's got away with that OK. Peter O'Brien in the number 17 Commodore got a great start there, so it'll be pretty thick and fast as they head down the straight and into Turn 1. But Des Wall leading into the first corner. Bob Jolly also a great start, as is Peter O'Brien. And Terry Shield coming back into third place, into fourth place, I should say, in the Mazda RX-7. Well, this time they've got it all right, or at least all left, because they've got around the corner OK, as Des Wall in his Toyota Supra number 20 leads them out of Icy Ice Coffee Strong for the day into the left-hander that is known as Shell. There's a lot of smoke coming from one of the cars there. I think that may have been Glenn Taylor yes, in the number 19. Yes, indeed. And uh, that's no ordinary Toyota Supra Des Wall's got there. A six-litre Chev motor under the bonnet, uh, well, more specifically, in the, uh, the cabin, a mid-mounted, purpose-built chassis, and Des Wall does very well in that Supra. Well, we can see the Glenn Taylor there in the orange car with the green nose cone and stripe down the centre of it is calling it a day. Mechanical problems continuing to plague the youngster who's done so well since coming into this great category of sports sedan racing. But out in front, Des Wall continues to lead, but coming under pressure there from Bob Jolly in the Flymo Commodore and uh, not far behind them, Terry Shield in the Mazda RX-7 in third place. Well, Bob Jolly's got a realistic chance of taking out the prestigious O'Brien Aluminium Sports Sedan Series. This is the third round, their first race, scoring points in, on all occasions that he's uh, come to Warren Park for this great series. But Des Wall seems to have his measure at the end of the third lap going down the end of the straight. These cars sit very flat. As I said, purpose-built chassis. The sports sedan's really uh, very well honed. And uh, you can see there also Terry Shield catching right up on the tail of the Bob Jolly Commodore. Uh, this car has got enormous amounts of power. It's a turbocharged RX-7 Mazda. And uh, Terry Shield, of course, uh, a Bathurst veteran and a veteran of uh, touring car racing. Race for the Works Nissan team in the past. A man of immense driving skill. Let's see whether he's got any answer to Bob Jolly going down the main straight. Turn one in this great circuit in Sydney South West is an area where a lot of overtaking occurs. That's where the accident occurred in the first attempt at starting this race. There's Des Wall piloting the Toyota Supra through there nice and easy. Legacy of a little ding on the side of the door there near the number, courtesy of that accident earlier on. Back there, Mike Imry uh, in the Saab uh, V8, also uh, just ahead of a, a couple of other cars midfield. Here comes Terry Shield, right, right on the tail of Bob Jolly, out of uh, O'Brien Aluminium Dogleg, down into Momo Recaro Speedline, and up onto the main straight they go for what should be their last time. And uh, certainly Terry Shield trying as hard as he possibly can to make up all of that lost ground. You can see him just in picture on the right of screen there now, pokes his nose up the inside. And... Will he pull it off? Terry Shield round the inside, a bit of dirt raised there as he tries to duck under Bob uh, Jolly and he does it successfully. Terry Shield up into second place but Des Wall looks like he's got the race well and truly in his grasp. Uh, Terry Shield powering through uh, the, uh, the dip there and up to the dog leg. Yes, a flash of flame out the left hand side of the uh, car. This Mazda is certainly well and truly tuned but Des Wall seems to have had a very comfortable lead in this race so far and he's been unworried through and through. And the chequered flag there for Des Wall in the Toyota Supra. Second home, Terry Shield in the RX-7 Mazda. And third home, Bob Jolly. One man who was squeezed for racing room out there in turn number one of the O'Brien Aluminium Sports Sedan Series was Peter O'Brien. Your comments? 
from a driver's perspective? Well, I was sitting uh, sixth on the grid, I think it was, and had a really good start. And I just come down there and um, went up the inside of Bob, and then Bob just come across a bit, so I gave him a bit of racing room. And then Glenn, Glenn Taylor come down the middle of me, like the inside of me, and then Ivan went around, and as Ivan went around and rolled back, I just caught him on the um, left rear quarter and did a bit of damage, but that's all I could see. And then I come around the next corner and it was a red flag. So, But it was a bit touch and go there for a while, but that's racing. One driver of super trucks that has been very prominent in years gone by is the number seven Shell Rimula Super X driver, and that is Rodney Crick. Welcome to Warren Park Raceway, Rodney, but this year's championship has not been all that kind to you. No, we um, crashed out of the first round in qualifying on the Friday, the accelerator jam, and had a prang at 150 kilometres an hour. So it put us out. It's only a three-round uh, championship, so we didn't even run the first one, so it made it a bit hard. Won the uh, round in Winton a couple of weeks ago and we got pole yesterday for the, today, so hopefully we can do our best today. Well, you've just come back from a warm-up session here, only 10 or 15 minutes out on the track, but how does the Shell Rimula Super Truck seem to you? Yeah, it feels really good. We've done a really good time this morning, so hey, let's hope we can uh, come home with the bacon today. Robbie Russell, one very experienced campaigner in the Super Truck Racing. Welcome to Warren Park. Oh, thank you very much. Not about the experience bit, but we, we've been here a fair while and we try hard. Well, because of that, how have you found the series so far this year for you? Um, I think the racing is getting better. We're, we're probably losing a few in numbers, but the racing itself is definitely better. We're a lot closer. Like you see with qualifying yesterday, I think there was um, the top six trucks when he separated by about half a second. And how's the preparation for your particular truck going for this weekend's final round of the championship? Well, <laughs> we thought we were going pretty good, and then we had a few problems yesterday. We've come out this morning in the warm-up, and... We've had a brake problem we were chasing all weekend that hasn't, hasn't quite fixed itself. We've finished up putting all the old parts back in it, actually. But, um, it will, we'll go OK. We'll be there. As you probably know, we're running second at the moment. It's out of um, Bill Cedars and myself. We're trailing by seven points, I think it is. So hopefully if I can finish in front of Bill each race, we're going to have a chance of at least, uh, at least a draw anyway. Muscat Trailers racing driver Gary Thompson joins me trackside. You haven't had the best of preparations this year so far, at least this weekend anyway. Practice wasn't too kind to you? No, no, we've had one hell of a hectic week. We've, um, I don't think there's one part of the truck that we haven't um, pulled apart or changed or broken or somewhere along the way. Um, I've got a team of fantastic blokes that, um, behind the scenes and um, I'm keeping them busy, I'm afraid. <laughs> Well, you've had a chance to warm the truck up this morning prior to racing commencing a little bit later on. How does it feel? Have you affected all the changes you needed to affect? Yes, I'm, um, I'm, I'm feeling hopeful. For, um, uh, I, th I think we'll be there. We'll either be there or we'll be broken. Time now for race one of the Ideal Internet Australian Super Truck Racing Grand Final. And that's some of the silverware they'll be fighting out for as the trucks form up coming up through onto the main straight for a start. Rodney Crick on pole, alongside him Ron Russell, Bill Cedars on position three and Glenn Dobson on position four. The pace car pulls off and Crick puts the pedal to the metal. The smoke pouring out of the shell Volvo as they head on down the straight for the first time. Well, I'll tell you, Glenn Dobson got a great start there in the man Phoenix number 10 from the second row of the grid. He's the one on the extreme outside. Look at this, three wide already into the first turn. It's Crick on the inside of Russell, who's rubbing uh, guards there with Dobson, who's ended up going bush, courtesy of that little tap. That's what you get for being in no man's land on the outside of the circuit, John. Absolutely. The Scanny are off into the, uh, the dust there, but the Volvo continues to lead out in front. Rob Russell in second place, and then Bill Cedars back in third as they head through the dip for the first time. Looks like Gary Thompson in truck number 41 has made his way up into fourth, and the first of the light trucks, or the SBRs, is being headed by Jeff Mackett in the ice season. Of course, Jeff Mackett already wrapping up the light truck championship, but uh, we're all to play for in the, the main championship, the Australian Super Truck Racing Championship and of course uh, Bill Cedars leading that series heading into this final round. Well forget about the leader, look at the lead that he's got already. That's the number seven Shell Rimula X Super Truck of Rodney Crick, the Volvo in 12 that's doing a fantastic job. He had bad luck in the beginning of the season and has no real chance of taking out this Australian Championship this year. The battle is well and truly on between the drivers in second and third placing. Robbie Russell and Bill Cedars respectively. Absolutely, Cedars you saw there under a bit of pressure from Thompson. The uh, the rear wheels of the Kenworth lifting off the deck as they went down into the icy ice coffee dip. dip and uh, that's going to be an intense battle for third place. Cedars needs to get every point he can to defend his lead in the series. But Rod Crick still out in front. 
Well, with that sort of pressure from Thompson uh, being put onto the back of Cedars, that's allowed Robbie Russell to walk away with second place at this early stage. And you can see the defensive driving that's occurring here. Cedars pushing himself to the extreme inside, but it's not enough. There's a sniff of an opening, and there goes the number 41 mascot, Muscat Trailers. Kenworth W of Gary Thompson up the inside of Cedars. But everyone's favourite, Rod Crick, Ray right out in front uh, in the Volvo, and uh, he's got Rob Russell behind him in the Amtrak number 40 entry, as you see there, belching smoke and really putting the power to the ground as they head down uh, into the back part of Oran Park for this, the third lap. Well, if Albert Cedars is not careful, we'll have Jeff Macken all over the back of his truck because this lad driving number 47 loves to mix it with the big boys, and that's where it what puts the biggest smile on his dial, especially here at Oran Park. He's a real giant killer, Jeff Macken, and a great crowd favourite here at Oran Park, and there's a big crowd here today as we see him close right up onto the tail of uh, Cedars there. Meanwhile, Crick continues to cut his way through the diesel smoke out in front in this race uh, and still behind him Rob Russell in the Amtrak entry. Yeah, Robbie Russell's done a great job because if he's going to have any chance of taking out this championship he's got to finish ahead of Albert Cedars in each of the races here today as our race leader heads back onto the main straight. He's going to have some slower traffic to contend with. Always something that has your heart well and truly in your mouth but it looks like the Shell Rimula super truck of uh, Rodney Crick has managed to thread the needle, so to speak, with no problems at all. Not the same for Robbie Russell or for Gary Thompson, who have been forced to go right round the outside of Mark Morton. Looks like the Swedish Iron has the, uh, the measure of the American muscle this time around. The Kenworth's back in second, third and fourth place, while the Volvo out in front continues to lead. And as you say, gathering up some of that slower traffic as they head over the dog leg. Well, Gary Thompson hasn't given up the chase. You can see the way that he was four-wheel drifting it into the beginning uh, section of the O'Brien Aluminium dog leg there in pursuit of the man in second place, and that is Robbie Russell. Our race leader, Rodney Crick, and his uh, co-driver, of course, love it, does a fantastic job in helping prepare the truck and occasionally even gets to steer it. And uh, as we were saying before, a huge crowd favourite here at Oran Park, Rod Crick, in the, uh, the Volvo, uh, as we see Gary Thompson putting plenty of pressure on Rob Russell down through uh, the Coca-Cola corner there, and as they head down into the icy ice coffee dip, he's, uh, he's going to give him everything to look at through his rear vision mirrors. It's worth mentioning that Gary Warmington in uh, the Isuzu number three behind him there did the right thing and moved right out of the road because he could see that there was certainly a battle on in earnest. This might only be for second and third placing, but uh, Gary Thompson knows that he's in with a chance of a minor placing in the Australian Championship and uh, he's even knocking right on not only the back door of Robbie Russell coming up the inside of him at Momo Recaro speed line. What a sleek route move that was as they head down the straight, but he's also in with a realistic chance of finishing on the podium at the end of the day. And as he uh, heads down the straight, he's going to try and outrun him down into uh, the first corner there, and he'll have the inside running, which is the favourite uh, favoured line, and he does. He grabs the, uh, the second place off Rob Russell, Gary Thompson up into second place, and now in pursuit of Rodney Creek. Yeah, and Rob Russell hasn't given it up at all, although it was the gentlemanly thing that he did. He could have quite easily forced the issue, but he knows that today's racing is going to be long and arduous. And if he's going to have any chance at all, as it looks like we've got a spinner there, that is the number 18 of Michael Summers. Yeah, the headhunter's entry uh, spins off in the, uh, the Isuzu SBR. Uh, he'll get back on the track and uh, back with the, the leading action now. And, of course, Gary Thompson still in second place, but he's under plenty of pressure from Rob Russell. He's not letting this second place go very easily indeed. That's giving Rodney Crick the advantage out in front. He's going to be very hard to beat from this place. Well, our race leader is on his last lap now as he heads down through Coca-Cola turn and into the Icy Ice Coffee Strong Dip for the day, an area that's not a favourite part of Iron Park Raceway for Rodney Crick because he did come undone with a, with a New Zealander, a fellow truck racer by the name of Ron Salter, right in this area now as we're watching the body get the shake and the roll on the Gary Thompson truck. A little bit more stable for Robbie Russell back there in third placing with less than half a lap to go. As they head over the dog leg and down into the lip, you can see just how quick these big trucks go as they uh, head around that fast dog leg here at Oran Park. But it uh, looks like Gary Thompson's secure in second spot. Rodney Crick's going to take first place and uh, gets a little bit sideways for the crowd there, as does Gary Thompson. And uh, as I said, Rodney Crick takes the flag, Gary Thompson second and Rob Russell in third place.
beautiful panorama of Oran Park there. A huge crowd on this very hot day. We're about to see the Momo Course State of Origin Sports Sedan Series off the front row, Des Wall and Terry Shield for New South Wales. On the second row, Glenn Taylor and Peter O'Brien for Queensland ACT drivers, Ivan Mikak and Russell Stenhouse off row three. Yes, the fourth row, Bob Jolly and Bruce Taboo. Jolly got a fantastic start there. Glenn Taylor smoking as he goes down into turn number one. It's Terry Shield that leads with fellow New South Welshman Des Wall. Team Tactics coming to the fore there. Peter O'Brien being relegated back to third placing. But Bob Jolly, what a fantastic start from him. Absolutely. The uh, the big Flymo Commodore, a fantastic effort for the Victorian representing his state. And a big gap back to uh, third place. Peter O'Brien back there. Um, Bob Jolly in fourth place now, but the two New South Welshmen out leading in front. Glenn Taylor continuing to smoke in his Commodore back in fifth place. Yes, well, his teammate Peter O'Brien is currently in third and he's putting a lot of pressure on our race leaders at the moment, although the superior horsepower of the Toyota Supra and the Mazda RX-7 is against to the Commodore on screen now if Peter O'Brien's comes into its own on this long straight. But boy, oh boy, that Terry Shell Mazda RX-7 has got an enormous amount of power as it continues to lead this race. We saw the Glenn Taylor Commodore there, I think, expire. Huge amount of smoke from the back of his car, so I don't think we'll be seeing much more of Glenn Taylor in this Momo Course State of Origin series. But the New South Welshman continuing to dominate at the head of the pack. Yeah, Bruce Taboo's doing a great job up there with his fellow Victorian Bob Jolly. They're securing some of the minor placings, but it looks like New South Wales is going to take maximum points in this first three-lapper. Another one coming your way very shortly. Two of them back-to-back. -back. They'll have a break in the program, and then they'll have another two later on in the day. That is the formula of the State Against State, Mate Against Mate, Momo Course State of Origin series. We see Des Wall there in second place in the big six-litre Chev-powered Toyota Supra and uh, Terry Shield, his teammate, out in front. This is a real little rocket ship, this RX-7, and Terry Shield just coming to grips with it at the moment. Uh, Peter O'Brien in third place for Queensland and in fourth, Bob Jolly for Victoria. Yes, he's done a great job, Bob Jolly, coming off the rear of the grid. Bruce Taboo is up there as well with a realistic chance. And the Holden SS-A9X Tirana of Russell Stenhouse is in there as well. But checkered flag taken by the two New South Welshmen, followed by the Queenslander, then a Victorian. So Queensland definitely taking maximum points. Now they do it all over again, but there's a reversal of the grid. You can see Queenslander Peter O'Brien, Glenn Taylor having expired. His place is now taken by Craig Wildridge and uh, the second row is made up of the ACT combination of Stenhouse and Mickack with then Victoria and New South Wales at the rear of the grid. But a bit of uh, out of order running there. Wildridge doesn't get a very good start and Des Wall all over the back of him. Stenhouse slots into second behind Peter O'Brien as they head down into Coca-Cola and Terry Shield cuts through the pack and in fact gets under Stenhouse going through Coca-Cola up into second place. Some good points there for New South Wales coming up, I'm sure. Well, Tony Wilson has made his way up into the pack as well. As we can see, the number 54 car there of Craig Wildridge coming up the inside of the 44 of Bruce Taboo and forcing the issue and actually getting one place further up in the field. Stenhouse looks like he could have some problems there. He's really holding up the traffic in the A9X Tirana, but uh, out in front, the Peter O'Brien Commodore continues to lead and he's going to, going to be under pressure very shortly from Terry Shield. Look at Bob Jolly and Des Wall through the back of the pack as there goes Shields straight past uh, O'Brien so fast he almost caught pneumonia from the breeze as he headed down into turn one. Terry Shield uh, looking for a second win in uh, this second heat of the Momo Course State of Origin here today and uh, he's doing a great job in this little RX-7 turbo. And Peter O'Brien in the Commodore in second place. A big gap back to Stenhouse in third. He's got Bob Jolly all over him as they head through up to the dog leg. And, oh, goodness me, Wildridge and uh, Dabu tangle. And uh, that puts them out of the race. Uh, not so many points for uh, Queensland and Victoria, but it looks like Dabu back underway again. But Stenhouse continues to uh, hold third place down ahead of the uh, Commodore of Bob Jolly. Well, Stenhouse looked like the rear of his car there was smoking a little bit, so they're on their last lap now. And it's New South Wales, it looks like, taking maximum of points again in this one for first placing anyway, as Peter O'Brien gives chase for Queensland. Bob Jolly's right in there with a chance as well, but he's being held up at the moment in his efforts by the ACT driver, Russell Stenhouse, in the A9X. 
but Shiel continues to lead. He's coming under pressure now from Peter O'Brien, who closes right up through Ricaro Corner onto the main straight. But I think Shiel will have too much grunt heading down the main straight, and he'll claim his second victory in two races. Peter O'Brien for Queensland yeah, second, so New South Wales first, Queensland second, and uh, it'll probably be ACT third with Des Wall claiming fourth for New South Wales and giving that state a stranglehold on the points. Hi, my name's Albert Cedars. Um, I own this truck. It's uh, an MAN Phoenix, purpose built for racing. It's uh, got a V10 twin turbo motor developing 1,000 horsepower. Uh, it's coupled to an Allison automatic transmission and uh, an MAN rear axle. And uh, we run on road, road tyres, especially buffed, especially buffed road tyres. And in this really hot weather, it's not really suited, but hey, we, we make do with what we've got. Your Paul Sitter, the familiar sight of the Precision Engine Parts number one driver Peter Dane, alongside of him Greg King. Second row is made up of Jason Tilly and Graham Pearce, whilst on the third row it's Gary Pilkington and Will Cook. Green light, action underway, and Will Cook's teammate Pearce got a fantastic start from the fourth row of the grid. As the HQ Holden stream down into Coca-Cola Corner and Dane leading, but down the outside, Cook, as you said, a great start, and he's really putting the challenge out to Peter Dane, but too wide there at the first corner. We have a spinner, um, all the cars getting around him safely, but that's car 77, and that's uh, Richard Mork. Yeah, Mork just getting a little bit out of shape there as he went down into turn number one. Now, that's nothing unfamiliar for a HQ Holden as we've got the two uh, front runners doing a fantastic job, and that's exactly what they're doing. They're running away with it at this early stage. One lap down in this eight-lap encounter, and their nose to tail, but they've got a large enough gap to be able to concentrate on each other and not everybody else around them. The two global self-storage cars of Will Cook and Graham Pearce are in third and fourth as King tries to mount a challenge on the outside of Peter Dane. But Dane and King uh, often challenging each other here at Oran Park in the HQ Holden series. Dane a great competitor and of course wearing the number one as the national HQ Holden champion. He's got King right on his tail as they head down into the icy ice coffee strong uh, dip and uh, this HQ Holden racing very close and very spectacular, particularly between these two guys, Dane and King. Well, you can see the workout that the suspension on these cars get. By the time they get towards the sixth lap or so, you'd find that the suspension will be foaming and the brakes will be very soft and the car just won't be handling as well as what it did when it first got out onto the track. Absolutely not, as we see. Oh, car Claude Elias there in car 23 smacks it into the wall. I think his brakes might have been a bit soft there after just two laps. Uh, but Peter Day continues to lead out in front. And uh, look at Greg King right up on the uh, the bumper bar of the HQ Holden of Peter Dane. Uh, this is a great battle for the lead here in this uh, Ride Car Sound and Security HQ Holden Series race. It certainly is, and both Peter Dane and Greg King have an immense amount of respect for each other's driving ability. And look at this sandwich of HQs back there, the two global self-storage cars doing a fantastic job. I think you'll find that it's Will Cook that's leading Graham Pearce, and right behind him, Jason Tilly, as right behind our race leader, King, tries to line him up for another assault down the main straight. Interesting to see the different setups there. You saw Peter Dane's car just understeering slightly and Greg's, Greg King's car just slightly oversteering as they came into uh, the corner onto the main straight. Heading down the main straight now and those global self-storage cars sticking together uh, quite closely there in third and fourth place. Yes, it's being a very difficult task being made there for Jason Tilly in number 96 to get around the outside of them. And just behind uh, those three cars is David Cameron in number 30 and uh, Gary Pilkington in 68. They're engaged in a battle of their own as both our leaders dropping a wheel off the tar and into the dirt as they exit Shell Corner, head down Spectator Straight and through the O'Brien Aluminium Dogleg. It's a high-speed freight train of HQs. Look at this action down into the last turn on the circuit. Momo Recaro speed line. Yeah, team tactics there, as you said before. The uh, the guys in the global self-storage cars doing a Schumacher and Irvine, as we see. Greg King throwed a really strong challenge on Peter Dane, but he's going to be out too wide, heading into that uh, bottom corner at Oran Park. That's not the place to be. And Peter Dane maintains the advantage and maintains first place. But Greg King uh, tries again. This is going to be a great battle all the way to the end of the race here. Whoa, and Pierce off. Uh, so too is Cook in the, the global self-storage cars. They've taken each other out on uh, just lap five of this race. Well, that's promoted Jason Tilly to third and uh, David Cameron in car number 30, the Boral-sponsored car, doing a fantastic job in his first season. And uh, he's up there in fourth placing now with Pilkington. 
still snapping at their heels. Talking about snapping heels, look at the attitude on King's car. And just as I was talking about that before, Dane's car understeering, King's car very much the oversteerer, but uh, Dane maintaining that first place uh, out in front, and I think he's just gaining a slight advantage over Greg King as this race winds down. Well, there's only a couple of laps to go, but King certainly hasn't given up the chase at this point in time, and he'll want to greet the chequered flag ahead of Peter Dane come hell or high water. In the background, we can see that there's still that battle going on in earnest between Jason Tilly and the Tilly's Wrecking Automotive number six and the ball car number 30 of David Cameron. Pilkington has been relegated a little bit further back, and Will Cook is still maintaining his composure up there in sixth. Greg King trying everything he can to uh, get past Peter Dane, but I think it'll be all too late. Greg uh, King uh, in second place, Peter Dane out in front as they head down the Oran Park straight with two laps remaining. Greg King was much tidier and neater coming out of Momo Recaro speed line that time and uh, you can see the extra speed he's managed to maintain down the end of the straight through Coca-Cola. He takes a much wider entrance than he has been in laps gone by and he's right up onto the boot of Peter Dane out in front. Yeah, this is a great battle, the two uh, protagonists here, Dane, the national champion, and Greg King in that, uh, that active HQ. And boy, oh boy, it's pretty active at the moment as they head through uh, the dog leg once more. And uh, let's just see, with one, one and a half laps remaining, whether Greg King can do it. He's much closer this lap and uh, tries to dart around the outside and get a better line onto the straight. Look how close these two drivers are to each other. You could see there that King took an outside line and because of that he got a much cleaner inside run down the straight. Door handle to door handle. They've been bumper to bumper and it's definitely Strongberg against Strongberg down the straight. Into the, last, into the first turn of the last lap and Greg King has got it. If he can keep a nice tidy line on the exit of this corner he should maintain the lead right to the checker it's going to be very hard for Dane to come back from here but he's all over the tail of Greg King he's not giving up the fight uh, Peter Dane a great competitor and uh, Greg King very happy to have gotten past Peter Dane you don't get too many openings from Peter Dane oh very sideways there talk about shutting the door but uh, Peter Dane tries to go around the outside of him on the dog leg that's not to be he's lost uh, too much momentum and Greg King looks like he's going to uh, Cruise around Recaro Corner down the main straight and take the chequered flag in this uh, ride car sounded security HQ Holden Heat. It just epitomises what it's all about. First placing to King, second to Dane, till he gets third. The Boral car of Cameron in fourth, and Will Cook overcame uh, Gary Pilkington and ended up in fifth placing. And now it's time for a blast from the past in the Auto Fever Appendix J Series. This is round three in the second race on today's program for these competitors. And the Ford versus Holden battle continues. The front row, Peter O'Brien, Ford XY, and Grant Elliott, the Tirana XU1. Second row of the grid is a Tirana of Mike Dyer and Rodney States, Ford XY GT. Oh, it takes you back 27 years. This sort of race at Oran Park's been going on for three decades. And uh, this Appendix J is great racing indeed as Dyer gets down the inside and uh, followed there by Tilly also in the Valiant uh, challenging Peter O'Brien as they head around through Coca-Cola for the first time. Well, the driver with the most uh, on his plate in terms of piloting a car around here would have to be the number 60 Valiant of uh, Tilly back there in fourth placing. That's a new car making an assault up the inside of Grant Elliott's Orange Tirana X1. This is a push-button automatic Valiant, believe it or not, folks. This guy drives with one hand on the wheel and one on the right-hand side of the dash to push it into the right number of gears. We have all the modern technology as Peter O'Brien continues to lead the two Tiranas of Mike Dyer and Grant Elliott back in second and third and Rodney State up into fourth place relegating the Valiant back to fifth. Well the Ford might hold the upper hand at the moment and Peter O'Brien, not the same Peter O'Brien that drives the sports sedan, has gone a little bit wide there and opened up the door well and truly to the Tirana there of uh, Mike Dyer and I think he's also let through into second place in Grant Elliott in his little orange Tirana. Dyer, a veteran of, uh, of racing for many years. He's out in front now and he's got plenty of pressure applying uh, to him from Grant Elliott. The Valiant back in uh, third place now and Peter O'Brien dropping back to fourth. He looks like he might have a bit of a handling problem with the big Falcon. Well, if he's not careful, we'll be under increasing pressure from Rod State's uh, golden-coloured XYGT Falcon. And uh, he doesn't want that because with a decent placing here in this particular race, Peter O'Brien can wrap up 
the series for the Auto Fever. Appendix J or Group N, B and NC as they're called now. And he's now made his way up into third placing. Make that second as he squeezes Grant Elliott for a little bit of racing room there. Although Elliott does have the inside line. No, he's not going to get away with it. He, uh, he's gone right around the outside of Elliott there. So he's now back up into second place. O'Brien using every one of those 351 cubic inches in the Falcon GDHO. Uh, up into second place now, Elliott getting a bit sideways there through uh, Shell Corner as they head down through the dog leg and into Recaro Corner for this the third lap. Well, the Holden might lead, but I'd say the superior horsepower of the Falcon of Peter O'Brien's will overtake him by the end of the straight. Now he's going to make a liar out of me. Look at the tenacity of Dyer in that Tirana, although he's doing the gentlemanly thing there by the looks of it, taking a wide berth into turn number one. He's not going to force the issue. Well, yes, he is. He's gone straight across the front of the Falcon. And look at the attitude on that Valiant. The rear wheels there certainly not directly in line with the front. Dyer giving away two and a half litres in capacity. The little Tirana, 3.3 litres. The big Falcon, 5.7 litres. So uh, a big capacity uh, giveaway there. But, of course, the Falcon's weighing a lot more than the little Tiranas. And that was Holden's uh, strategy back in the 70s, going after the little car to try and beat the big car. It sometimes worked, but not always at Oran Park, as Peter O'Brien tucks his nose underneath Mike Dyer and will try and outgun him down the main straight. Well, he really had to do that. He had to force the issue into Momo Recaro's speed line so that he could get run, the run down the inside because he knows that that Tirana has certainly got some pretty good top-end speed and he had to be on the inside of the circuit. That's exactly what he's done. He can't go too wide, though, otherwise he'll open up the door again, as he did uh, in about the second lap of the race. But it certainly seems like Peter O'Brien had a problem on lap two and now that's solved. He's back out in the lead and uh, in front of Mike Dyer's Tirana Grant Elliott's Tirana in third, then Cameron Tilly in the Valiant, just ahead of Rodney State, coming under plenty of pressure there. All these old cars are showcased uh, at a modern venue. Oh, a bit of attitude there from Peter O'Brien. He's certainly trying extremely hard. The point I was getting at is that they must run to the same specifications as when they were all those years ago when they first started racing in the 60s and the 70s. Back in series production form, and of course those great names like John Goss and Alan Moffat and of course Colin Bond and Peter Brock all running uh, Falcons and Holdens at various uh, various levels over those years back in the 70s. It was great to watch and it's great to watch now. Well, the man with all the pressure on him at the moment is Dyer in second placing. He's uh, trying as hard as he possibly can to get up onto the rear of O'Brien because he thinks he's he fancies himself as a bit of a chance to take this one out, I'm sure. But he's got to cover his backside as well because there's another tenacious little character behind him, Grant Elliott, in that orange Tirana. A fair gap, though, now, building up between third and fourth placing, which is still being held down by Tilly and then State in fifth. But Peter O'Brien continues to lead down the main straight once more. This battle for second place, the two Tiranas continuing to rage on behind him as he's starting to catch up on some of the slower runners and will soon be lapping them. Well, he's got to keep his nose tidy for a couple more and he'll take the chequered flag in front of everybody else and that will also hand him the series for 1997, the Auto Fever Appendix J or Group NB and Group NC series that has been run here throughout the year and that will make him one very happy man. But he's got a couple of Tiranas right on his tail that want to make sure that the Holden finishes ahead of the four. He's getting plenty of attitude in the Big Falcon, getting very sideways at places there, which suggests that he may have some sort of suspension problem. That may have slowed him down earlier in the race, uh, but he's continuing to lead the race. He's going to be under plenty of pressure under these closing laps from uh, Elliott and Dyer. Well, Jason Tilly getting all out of shape as our leader starts his last lap now, the number 19 of Peter O'Brien. And of course, that is a Ford XY. He's doing a fantastic job out there. He's trying so hard that he's uh, really knocking on the door of the fastest lap ever set around here at Oran Park. But he's now coming up on some slower traffic. And I'd say that he'll be smiling extremely wide as he threads the needle in this last half a lap. And he gets past the Cortina of Chris Strode there, moving aside for him and also past the Little Hillman uh, as they head down into the dip for the last time. The FJ Holden moves across as well and Peter O'Brien a clear way through to the flag and he'll take victory here in this race and also the Auto Fever Appendix J Series here at Oran Park. Mike Dyer in second and Grant Elliott in third.
Welcome to Sydney's Oran Park Raceway for the Australian Grand Final of the Super Truck Races. On the grid now, though, it's the O'Brien Aluminium Sports Sedans. Race two in their third round. Yeah, looking at Terry Shield get off the line very slowly. Des Wald has gobbled him up off the line, as did uh, Peter O'Brien from the other side. And look at that, Peter O'Brien's got a brilliant start in the lead, coming down to the turn one. Fantastic start for uh, young Peter O'Brien. Got to get some of that uh, O'Brien money back for his father, Ron. Of course, the O'Brien Aluminium Sports Sedan Series has been sponsored over three rounds, up to $60,000 being given away. Des Wall in third, and it looks like Terry Shield in second place. A quality field this series really has brought out the best of Australian sports sedans here at Oran Park. Very impressive field, one of the best field of sports sedans I've seen for a long time, and I've been uh, watching him for a long time. I'll tell you what, that thing of uh, Terry Shield's off the line, was a little bit slow, t typical turbo car, but once it gets up and goes, look at that, comes on, burst down the straight, brilliant line down there, under brakes, the light, nimble little car, and away he goes to show the way around to the rest of those big V8s. Mike Emery in the background at fourth place at the moment in the Saab, very unusual car. Des Wall, big look up the inside as they head into the S's, but Peter O'Brien does a good job of slamming the door in his face. The car of Terry Shields, reputed to have over 500 horsepower, and it weighs near 700 kilograms. Wall, big look up the inside, thinks better of it though and backs off. Terry Shield did a good job at Sydney's Eastern Creek Raceway when the sports sedans returned there, running with the Amps car, took out a couple of wins. Yeah, looking at Peter O'Brien down there, he's under a lot of pressure from Des Wall. Wall in the super, makes a big lunge down the inside, late under brakes, side by side, but he's definitely got the line unless Peter can snap back on the inside as they come into the right hand with the S's. I don't think there's enough room or grunt to pull it off, but these guys are turning on some fantastic racing here. Next thing you know, uh, looking at this, I think Peter could come under a bit of pressure from Emery, who's making a lot of ground, and that car looks better and better every time you see it. It's a, a Saab body, but the rest of it is just full-on sports sedan, big Chevy V8, the only way to go. It's a great uh, representation of what you can find in, in sports sedan racing. Anything goes, just get as much horsepower as you possibly can and stick it in whatever you want. The Saab on screen now, as Chris was saying, beautifully turned out vehicle. Sports sedan racing in Australia, very, very good indeed. Lightning fast, Emery up the inside of O'Brien. He lets him through, will he fight back? He uh, may have the uh, the quicker run on the way out of the corner. No, the Saab managing to hold him out at the moment. So great drive from the camera driver. These cars lightning fast around here at Oran Park. Uh, the current lap record is held by Des Wall at a 42.1 second lap time. And that is lightning fast around here. Emery blocking the line as they came down into uh, the run up onto the straight now. May have been held up a little bit by, uh, looks like Fred Exesa in the Commodore. And that car, bulk horsepower, pulling away from Peter O'Brien, and I believe that vehicle in itself is reputed to have near 600 horsepower out of the small block Chev. Yeah, just looking at the way a couple of those cars have got around O'Brien, right in this section here on the exit of uh, Turn 1, it seems to be lacking a little bit of poker. To my mind, maybe it's a gear problem or something. Did the same thing coming onto the straight, because he shouldn't be falling back into their clutches that easily, And because uh, Peter's a pretty fierce competitor, and he's not going to give up that easily. I'd say he's got some mechanical problem. And looking at him over the crest of the hill there, makes a big lunge under brakes on Emery coming down into the run onto the straight. Uphill exit, get the power on, squeeze it down the straight as Terry Shield just blasts away in this little Nissan engine Mazda. It's a turbo Nissan, you might remember they were running them when, uh, in the days when George Fury set pole position at Bathurst. It's one of those engines with the boost well and truly turned up in a nice lightweight little body shawl of the RX-7 Mazda. And again, look at Emery, just pull that little bit of a gap on there on Peter O'Brien, who's really come to grips with this thing around here. He's trying to screw everything out of it. I'd say that whatever the problem is, he's worked a way around it. Remember when Michael Schumacher once finished the Grand Prix without fifth gear and still uh, managed to win it, and you can drive around a mechanical problem. Look at Peter O'Brien, he's found a way around it. He's putting pressure on Emery, under brakes, down the outside, makes Emery take a tight line onto the straight. This should give Peter a little bit better exit onto the straight, gets the power down, but look at that Saab. And again, whether it's a gearbox problem or what, Peter seems to lose a little bit and gains it back again at the end of the straight. Well, that car definitely uh, gets wound up and starts to run hard. He did give Emery a little bit of a nudge going onto the straight that time, so he's definitely on his hammer, but he does lose it in different parts of the racetrack. Whether it's a matter of uh, the camshaft bringing power to the, uh, the car at certain places on the track, this is where he's fast, though. Up through here, really gets on the tail of the Saab. Now down under brakes, can he do anything with it? Looks to the outside, that seems to be his favourite move. Switches back to the inside, got very, very close. He, again, nudges the back of the Saab. 
things extremely tight between these two competitors, and, and Emery's got a problem. Yeah, Emery's got so, a problem. O'Brien straight round the outside. Could have been very bad down the straight. The last thing you want is for someone to stop in front. Doesn't mean that they've uh, done it intentionally, but if you have an engine let go or something, and you're pulling, you know, big revs in a big Chev engine car like that, that can be very, very dangerous. Peter did well to snap to the outside, and uh, Emery certainly did the right thing there. And they didn't come into contact. It certainly was close though, Chris. Peter O'Brien now in third place on his uh, last lap. He's done a great drive job, but you've got to hand it to Terry Shield, about to greet the chequered flag to take the win in race two, round three of the O'Brien Aluminium Sports Sedans. Deswell second, and Peter O'Brien third. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Frank Amoroso from uh, Fate Racing Team. We've got a Kenworth W900 here with a, a Cummins uh, powered diesel in it that's developing about 1,200 horsepower. It runs a, a five-speed Allison automatic and uh, a Rockwell differential with a Detroit locker in it, just on standard road tyres. Uh, we, uh, well, we run in the top six, I suppose, and uh, uh, with a little bit more time and a little bit more sponsors. If you notice, notice the advertise here, we are chasing some money, so if anyone's got any, they can give it to us. Thank you very much. Time now for the Ideal Internet Australian Super Truck Racing Championship Reverse Grid Grand Final. You can see that the Isuzus head them up, and our pole sitter is Mark Morton, alongside of him is Michael Summers in there as well as Gary Wilmington and Jeff Mackin as well as Ken Lusty. They've been given the green flag already as the big daddies of them all come around and they're headed with Frank Amoroso and Gary Thompson on the front row whilst at the rear we've got Robbie Russell and Rodney Crick. As they head down the straight and Thompson gets a good run down there as does Dobson in the uh, in the man Phoenix as they head down. Whoa Mackin down the inside as does Lusty around the outside of uh, Wilmington there, but uh, a great effort there by Mackin to grab the lead, heading down into Coca-Cola Corner on the first lap. Well, I don't think Gary Wilmington was game to even shudder or shiver by the way that these trucks are going at it at the front of the back. You've got Mackin with two wheels on the dirt. Now, these drivers have been warned about this by the clerk of the course earlier on today. They need to be very, very careful because he is coming down on them like a ton of bricks and rightfully so because the racing track is where the racing should be held. But Mackin it is that is in chase now of Lusty in 87. And back in third place there, the truck 18 of Michael Summers. As we see the big daddies come through, Dobson leading in the Man Phoenix, uh, just ahead of Gary Thompson with Cedars back in third place in the big truck challenge. Did you see the way Mark Morton went to the inside of the circuit in his Isuzu there? He wants nothing of these big guys coming through from the back while the two at the front are engaged in their own battle. We're talking about Lusty just leading Morton. No, it's Mackin, I beg your pardon. They're both in black trucks. And now Wilmington's putting a bit of pressure on the outside of uh, Summers. And they're both going to have a rear vision mirror full of the number 10 MAN Phoenix Diesel of, of course, Glenn Dobson. Dobson doing a great job there in the big truck battle, as is Lusty at the head of the SBRs as Dobson starts to run them down as this race unwinds. Gary Thompson there right behind uh, Dobson and Bill Cedars in third, just ahead of Creek. Well, Rob Russell is uh, wearing the scars of a little bit of battle there by the looks of it. The outside corner, the right-hand front. Mudguard is uh, a little bit damaged that last time he came around through the O'Brien aluminium dog leg there. Actually, a piece of it fell off, so we'll have to see whether that causes him any problems in the handling department of his truck. But Lusty is certainly running away with it. He has a fairly large lead of about three or four SBR truck lengths over uh, number 47 Mackin. And Dobson fighting his way through now up into third place, and he'll be challenging uh, Mackin and Lusty very soon. He's got uh, Gary Thompson not far behind him, and they've cut, uh, cut through ahead of Summers uh, as the big trucks start to grab the advantage off the smaller SBRs. Well, it looks like uh, Cedars was held up a little bit there by one of the slower trucks. I think it was Wilmington who's getting to the outside. And look at this, three wide through the O'Brien aluminium dog leg sideways. And he had no option, did the number seven of Rodney Crick, but to go dirt tracking there. And that may well bring out the black flag, signifying a stop-go penalty. We'll wait to see what the adjudicators have to say on that one. He had more attitude on than a lot of cars at Rally Australia, but uh, the big Volvo really very sideways there. Very well held, and as you say, no alternative but to head for the grass. As they head down into Coca-Cola Corner, Rodney Crick, a great competitor, is still chasing the uh, Kenworth of Gary Thompson, but uh, Dobson out in front from the, uh, the big trucks as Lusty continues to lead the race overall. Well, a little bit of water there being sprayed from the underside of the cabin of the number seven uh, Volvo. And 
uh, of course these brakes have uh, water cooling to aid them and uh, they certainly get very hot under the collar as we can see some more coming across over the front of the wheel there. Just a little bit of overflow from these big, big radiators in the front of these trucks. Now Rodney Crick has not slowed off any and actually is tiptoeing through the tulip, so to speak, at nearly every corner. Now that should certainly uh, give him a penalty of stop go. But Ken Lusty out in front in his uh, Isuzu SBR and of course sponsored by Lusty Australia, his own company, Trailer Manufacturers, and uh, he's continuing to hold the pack at bay out in front and behind him, not too far behind, in fact, Jeff Mackin, he's got Glenn Dobson all over the tail of his little Isuzu SBR as well. Well, Mackin is normally the dominant force in the Isuzu SBRs, and it's good to see that last year has managed to uh, get their act together. The team has put a lot of effort into it over the last 12 months, at least in this season of truck racing anyway, and it's good to see that he's leading the field. And I'll tell you what, I don't even think Dobson's going to have a chance of making up that deficit with the remaining laps here, even if he does get around Jeff Mackin as they head down the main straight. One Travel another lap here at Oran Park. As Dobson pulls to the outside and goes past Mackin, the uh, the bigger engine capacity of the MAN Phoenix getting past the uh, the little Azusu and down into second place. Let's just see if he can catch the uh, the Azusu of uh, Ken Lusty, who's doing a great job out in front. Well, these trucks, of course, are limited to a maximum speed of 160 kilometres an hour down the straight, and they do have limiters on these trucks, and you might hear them in the background occasionally popping as they go down the straight and that is because of the limiting speed that they have here. Back in uh, fourth placing, it's Thompson, who's under all sorts of pressure now from Rodney Crick, who seems to have got away with what he was doing earlier on. They don't have those little signs on the back, speed limited to 160, though, Lance. <laughs> no, they definitely don't, but they've certainly got big bull bars on the back of them, and uh, most of the trucks take good advantage of that. As Rodney Crick comes through, he's got away with no battle scars this weekend. He's right up onto the rear of Thompson, and he's uh, right over to the right-hand side. I thought he was going to call into the pits there for that moment, John, but it looks like he's got away with it yet again. Yes, indeed. Uh, Crick continuing on his way, but out in front, Ken Lusty continues to lead. He's got uh, Dobson closing in on him. Mackens in third place, Gary Thompson in fourth, and Crick back in fifth place in the Shell Rimula Volvo. Yes, and Crick back there is continuing to put up a lot of dust by cutting the corners, whether it be going wide like he's doing there now, he keeps it on the black stuff. But we've just got word through, John, that he is actually being given a stop-go penalty and will be calling into the pits this next time around. That's bad luck for Rodney Crick, who uh, was trying very hard to recover ground. Uh, back in fifth place, but Lusty continuing to hold the pack at bay, doing a great job in the little Azusa. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if he can hold off Dobson and the MAN Phoenix. In the remaining laps of this race as Dobson continues to run him down, heading down into Coca-Cola corner. Well, Dobson's certainly got the measure of him in the top end speed anyway. Thompson goes wide. Well, Rodney Crick hasn't come into the pits that time around. Mackin is getting in the road of Thompson. And look at Crick trying to force his way up the inside there. Will he be forced onto the dirt again? Mackin doesn't give him an inch. He actually gets forced onto the dirt there by Rodney Crick. As Thompson has made his way up into third, that gives Crick fourth. Mackin relegated back to fifth placing. But let's not forget we have had that word that Rodney Crick will have to come into the pits and affect the stop go penalty. So out in front, Dobson uh, now right on the tail of Ken Lusty as they head round Recaro corner. And uh, we see Crick there putting plenty of pressure on uh, Gary Thompson. And we'll just see if he comes into the pits this time. It looks like he's uh, taken notice of that black flag. Yes, there's the black flag for Rodney Crick. He comes in for the stop-go penalty. He'll be really boiling this hot weather at Oran Park as he lights up the rear bags of the uh, Shell Rimula Volvo and heads back down onto the track. Bad luck for Rodney Creek. Well, he'll be a little bit disappointed with that, but somebody who won't be disappointed with their driving performance will be Lusty in the number 87 Nicezu SPR. He's doing a fantastic job to still hold off the challenges of Glenn Dobson. A lot of white steam and smoke coming out the rear of that MAN Phoenix as he now lines him up on the outside. Down the main straight he goes. I don't think Lusty's going to be able to cover his line. No, he can't, so he snaps to the outside. Dobson goes a little bit wide. Lusty gets some wheels on the dirt on the inside. A big puff of diesel smoke there as uh, Dobson gets back on the accelerator again, and I think he'll simply walk away with it from here. Lusty's not giving up the fight. He's hanging in there through the twisty stuff as they head down into the icy strong dip, and uh, Dobson way out in front, and he looks like he's got the race well in his command as they head round Recaro corner and onto the main straight. The, uh, the back end of that man, Phoenix, really jittering and juddering. Plenty of smoke coming off the back. Dobson heading down 
the uh, main straight and uh, this race well in his keeping. Yes, it certainly is. With only one more lap to go, let's take this opportunity to have a close look at Dobson and the way that he pilots this number 10 truck around. You can see that he takes a very clean line. It gets a little bit slideways there as he heads out of turn one and down in through the dipper. And uh, the truck starts to rock and roll a little bit. Hard on the brakes, down through the auto gearbox, then back onto the throttle again. And the telltale signs, the puff of smoke out of the exhaust system as he heads off through the O'Brien aluminium dog leg for the last time. Glenn Dobson looking good. This is his last lap. And up around Recaro Corner, the crowd cheering as Glenn Dobson takes his reverse grid. The Ideal Internet Australian Super Truck Racing Championship heading down across the line. He takes the chequered flag from Ken Lusty. Gary Thompson will cross the line in his Kenworth, Kenworth in third place. And Jeff Mackin will take fourth.